All right, here we are. It's the Better Man 365 podcast. My name's Obi. I've got my co-host here, Jeff. What's going on? Jeff, we've got a, a, a slew of fantastic people with us that are joining us all the time here. Yes. So great. We got David. Hello. We got our uh, phenomenal leader, Marcos, in the house. What's up, guys? And we got Joe over here in the corner. Okay. Joe, you've been really bad, bro. Yeah. Okay. I actually missed I mean, the tournament. So that's, I, was, that's I missed the now. turtleneck is what I miss. From yeah. last time. <laughs> I, I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling a little The Steve Jobs turtleneck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically, the Better Man 365 podcast, we're a bunch of guys getting together, and it's in an effort to help men find that better man, which is Christ. And as we can do that together, what I love about this group that you'll see here is that we weekly get together. And I really do appreciate that because that is true discipleship when you guys are helping keep me in line. Yeah. And then you know, it's funny too, because we were on the weekly Zoom call that we do. Basically, this whole episode's about just this this topic of really finding that time with the Lord. Sometimes we put so much things in our lives ahead, even like ministry sometimes. we put we, Ministry can become an idol and we just go through the motions like, hey, I got to get here. So today we're going to be talking about like really, what is it like to really spend time with the Lord? And it was interesting too, I was reading something that sparked this it was a- after our Zoom call. I read it. I'm like, man, that was powerful. Like Billy Graham, like on his deathbed, actually said, they said, it, was it, would there be anything that you could change in your life that you would do differently? And he said, yes, actually, there, w- there was. He goes, I would have spent more time with intimacy with Jesus in prayer instead of traveling all over the world. And I thought, wow, how powerful is that? Because you think most of the time people like, you, know, you see a lot of these evangelists go out and they go, I'm doing this for the gospel. I'm doing this for the gospel. And are they going through the motions sometimes and not spending that time with the Lord? What I got out of when Billy Graham said that, what I got out of that is like, man, think about if that was more of his focus, how much more powerful his crusades would be, right? I think sometimes we we get in the way of what God really wants to do. Like we were talking about this podcast. It's the same thing. It's like, I think we're getting in the way. We got to let God show up. So I, I just thought that was mind blowing that, Billy Graham said that. I have a confession. Um, and maybe I'm not the only one who feels this way. Maybe I am. But um, am I the only one that just doesn't feel like going on our Zoom calls on a weekly basis sometimes? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, I, I for uh, sure don't feel like going on that Zoom call sometimes. I mean, because, it takes work. Uh, yeah, I mean, like. I cannot tell you how many times now, and we haven't been doing this a long time, so I think I've counted maybe, well, when you count, if you don't count the weeks we skipped because of conflicts or uh, or because we don't meet the first week of the month, I think we've met six times Yeah. Uh, so far. And of those six times, I don't want to tell you how many I didn't feel like coming mm-hmm. on, but there were uh, there were quite a few of those that I was just like, man, today, like, today's probably the worst yeah, day of all days. This, yeah. where this zoom call could be scheduled um but then i also know how i feel after the call yeah and after the call i feel like the guy who leaves the gym going you know i didn't feel like coming here today but man i feel good right now you know and and they can now take their day on if they're working out in the morning or whatever whenever they work out and um and i'm saying that as an illustration to how often i enter my intimacy and my time with the lord to go, ah, dang, I just, I don't feel like it today. Um, and sometimes I succumb to that. And then I just don't, I don't meet with Jesus that day. You know, that's happened more often than I care to admit. Um, but, you know, if, if we're just, if we're honest, I, I think it's a great place to start as to why it's so important. Um, but as to also what tends to happen when we put the work in, when we show up and when we make that sacrifice, you know, to be there. I I go back to this thought of um, just a mantra that I feel like God has shown me is just show up. You know, like I'm never going to always feel 100%. There are times that I'm in, in lockstep with him and in rhythm and it's all working out great. But there are moments like our Zoom calls. Uh, but my frustrations with the Zoom calls are different. And I'll, I'll unpack that if we're going to have these conversations. Here <laughs> in public. I'll unpack that if we need to. Uh, Please but, do. But my... 
my thing is that it doesn't matter how I feel. What matters is, did he invite me to this opportunity or did he not? I need to resolve that right off the bat. Yeah. Because if, if I say yes to that, then my feeling about it doesn't matter. Right. Because the measure of success is obedience or disobedience. If I show up, there's a very high probability that I'll meet him there because I just obeyed. Yeah. You know, I think the the jacked up part for the people in the Bible that we, you know, read all the time is that they didn't have this to read about. Right. They couldn't go to the next paragraph to see that it worked out. They were yeah, they were having yeah. to live into their faith like That's in real good. time. And that was all dependent upon their relationship with him. And whether it felt good or not, they leaned on that relationship. And so for me, um, whether I enjoy the, the the meetings or not, it's just I have a responsibility to show up because I have to answer at this moment. I have to answer, yes, God invited me to this process. And as a result of that, I just need to show up. Can, can I ask a question? How, how do we know if it's God requesting us or if it's our ego requesting to be there? How do, how do we know the two? How can we tangle with the two? Well, I, I think we would need to do a whole podcast episode around listening to God because, you know, I love the fact that you can ask that question and anyone listening to this thing, every single person, I don't, I don't even know why I'm getting emotional about this, but it's just, I think that sometimes we are looking for an algorithm and a formula to say, oh, if these two things happen, then I know it's God. God speaks through many different ways. One of the primary tools he uses is, is, that book? is, is his word. Yeah. Um, he placed the Holy Spirit inside of us so that we can have interactions and conversations with a person, not a thing, not a smoke, not a spirit the kind of thing. He's a person that's living inside of us that gives us access to the Father's heart. And as a result of that, we don't trust that. We don't talk to him. We don't invite him to the process. And so for me, it's like he can speak through people. He can speak through nature. He can speak sure, through circumstances. Sure. He can speak through the word, which is often a primary way that he'll speak. Um, and there are other times, exceptional times, that he will speak audibly to you, and you're just kind of not guessing that it's him. Uh, but here's a funny thing is that uh, you and I have more than one kid, more than one kid represented here, right? Uh, I don't know the science or the math behind it. But they were born in the same, out of the same body, same circumstances, same food, same everything. And yet how I communicate and express that love to each one has to be totally different. I love them as intensely. Like I would die for either one. But how I communicate that is got to be different because each right. one is a different type of person. And so I would love to tell you like, hey, if you do these calisthenics spiritually, you're going to know it's God. What I will say personally, my personal experience with him is I I don't I I don't make a lot of choices without talking to him. I'm talking to him all the time, uh, and oftentimes I'm talking to him while reading this thing. And so something will jump out at me. Something will just pop up, and a verse will just kind of hit me in a particular kind of way, and it and it acts to me as an invitation to go deeper. Right. Right. And then sometimes. I'm so jammed up because I want something so bad, I can't trust my heart. Jesus says, your heart is deceitful above all things. And so I'll reach out to someone and yeah. I say, hey, I'm wrestling with this thing. Would you pray with me? Would we talk? And oftentimes I think if you have really, really great people in your life, they're not going to tell you what to think. They're going to challenge you on how you're thinking. And there'll be an invitation to go look at the word, not just my opinion about a circumstance, yeah, but like, yeah. hey, let's let's pursue this together. And Hopefully, they're asking questions that will provoke you. And so I don't know that I answered your question, but I just don't think there's a the, – it, it would require way more time, and I can do that. And 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 it's one of my favorite subjects around listening to God. Um, but for me, it's just the simplicity of I'm praying all the time. I'm checking myself with the Word all the time. The Holy Spirit's illuminating things to me all the time. He uses people in my life to speak into my life circumstances begin to kind of like click and I can see things. And then I, I know. Um, if I've looked at this whole better man process, I, it's been a series of events that I just, I cannot attribute or ascribe to my own. I have actually not wanted to do this. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Keep showing up. And I think, and I think part just of the answer up. too, I think part of the answer too lies in us positioning ourselves, you know, to here. Um, and so in my own life, you know, yes, it's, 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 uh, it's the word it's prayer. It's saying yes to those moments, even when I don't feel like it. Uh, but to David's point about the people in our lives, it's, 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 it's being humble enough to put ourselves in positions to hear from people, 
um, because oftentimes God speaks to us through people and he will bless us and he will rebuke us through people. Um, and, and that's a good thing, you know? And so positioning ourselves to hear from people, to be led by people, uh, to be shaped by people, you know, you, you've, you've probably heard that phrase, you know, uh, that the two greatest influences in your life are, you know, uh, the books that you read, you know, and the people that you hang out with. And so, you know, just understanding how much that shapes us and who we are is so important in, uh, in our ability to even position ourselves to be able to hear from God. You know, a lot of us want to hear from him, but we don't position ourselves to do that. And so just taking simple steps, not only in our spiritual discipline, but in who we decide to allow to speak into yeah. our life um, is so important. Well, so we were talking about time with Jesus. And, uh, you know, I often think about like you, you have to spend time with an individual, especially if they don't speak the, the same language that you do. You have to spend time with that individual to get to learn them, to get to learn their their nuances, to get to learn when when they're emphasizing something to you. And so that time, you guys have a, a, a time, um, a scheduled time with Jesus? Anybody have a scheduled time, a scheduled habit with the Lord? Joe? First thing. First thing is the first schedule. To bring the first part of your day, and I, I t- t- to me, what what I know is I, I am like a, a rubber band, and I I fit back to form when I wake up into consciousness the new morning, and that form is I I will wake up wanting it my way. I want my life my way, and so immediately, you know, s- take that rubber band and sp- and basically put it uh, put it on Jesus, you know, and um begin to fit that form right out right away yeah and you you brought up too it's important like for someone that may be like listening to this or watching this and saying like i'm i'm hearing what they're saying but i'm 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 praying i'm reading my bible it's just not but i i'm just not hearing anything what would you what would you say to someone like that that just feels like they just keep hitting a wall well i Sorry for jumping in. I no, it's good. Go ahead. Uh, we should have like a buzzer. I <laughs> <laughs> feel like, ah, tag your it. Um, I really think that we were not designed to do this walk in isolation. Uh, we were meant to do this in community. And if you're not being discipled by someone, so uh, having someone in your life that you can go and how, and that individual is spiritually mature enough that they can help shape you know, the call of God in your life. Now, I, I've, I've been under some bad leadership. I've been under some good leadership. And there are times that people will try to make you the best version of themselves. Right. And I think right. that's, that's the worst, right? Yeah. But if someone is gifted to be able to see who you are in the spirit or see certain gifts inside of you in the spirit and make the, the time investment that, that's required to help walk you through that process, they can help point out God in the story. I think it's, it's oftentimes that we hear from God more often than we think. Yeah. We just don't ascribe it to him because we've just been conditioned to say that's coincidence or that was my gut feeling or that was this or that Ooh. was that. You know, that's and it's it, it it is through yeah. in my opinion, it's through the process of discipleship that you refine that. Like I don't I don't think you're saved because you go to church. I don't think you're saved because you can go from Genesis to Revelation and quote me every scripture. I, I think obedience is reflected through action. Um, Paul kind of addresses that in Hebrew when he says, yo, you're still drinking milk. I have to keep rehearsing yeah. these truths with you. Uh, but the reality is that meat is for those that through exercise are able to discern between what is good and evil. And then, then chapter six, which is h- hilarious to me, is just, let's leave these elementary teachings of Christ. <laughs> it's like, what? That's like 98% of the church <laughs> in the United States is talking yeah. about that every Sunday. Um, but he's saying that there is a deeper level to the relationship. And sometimes, sometimes um, it's not the absence of him talking, it's the absence of me ascribing it to him talking wow. and being familiar with it. One of my favorite stories, and I'll shut up, um, is uh, Samuel as a prophet. When he gets, when he gets called to be a prophet, God is calling him and he's, he, 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 you know, he keeps running to Eli and he's just like, hey, what do you want? Like God is audibly speaking to this guy yeah. and he, he's not familiar with the voice, even though he was a solid dude, right? right? He wasn't familiar with the voice. And so he keeps running to Eli and say, yo, is it, is it, why do you keep calling me? And then Eli recognizes, right? A, a mentor recognizes, hey, the next time you say, 
uh, it's me. I'm here, Lord. I'm listening. Like, download, right? Mm. Please, for everyone watching, I'm not a heretic. It's in the Bible. I'm just, this is the ghetto <laughs> version of the Bible. Um, but, uh, translation. <laughs> yeah, this is the ghetto translation of it, but it's in there. Um, and so it's just that idea that I think sometimes we need people to help us translate yeah. what's happening. Um, and, and the last, uh, another story, I'm sorry, is, but these, this is like what happens to me is like all of this stuff starts struggling. Yeah, it's good. Is, uh, you know, one of my favorite things is is the call of Peter uh, in the Sea of Galilee. Is like when, we all know the story of like casting the net on the other side. We like that story, but we don't realize is like uh, it happens twice in the Bible and in John, yeah. um, in the Gospel of John, towards the end there, Jesus resurrected Jesus. Um, Peter's so jammed up trying to pull up the fish, he can't recognize that it's Jesus. It's John that says, "Yo, that's the Master." Yeah. Right. Sometimes we need people to help us with the process. Yeah. So discipleship is critical and important, is what I would say. Hey guys, a lot of times in these podcast recordings, we're gonna discuss topics that are derived from one of the great curriculums that we're working with right now from Better Man Ministries. They have a core curriculum, it's 11 weeks long, and our team's been going through some of this curriculum. Wanted to let you know that some of the things that we're discussing are coming out of this curriculum, and so we hope that you'll take the opportunity to uh, be a part of this curriculum as well sometime in the future, either alone, with a group of men at your church. It's a fantastic resource, and I just want to encourage you to be a part of it. Subscribe to the podcast and follow us at BetterMan365 on our social media platforms.